Hi, it's Steph, and this evening I'm hosting a garden tour in my garden. And I'm also going to take some footage to show you what the garden looks like right now in the first week of July. It's the next day and I hosted a garden tour here at my home yesterday evening and I was having such a great time socializing with all of the people who came that I ran out of daylight and I didn't get to record my July garden tour like I had planned. So I'm going to go around and record the garden today and share with you what's looking really beautiful right now in the first week of July. Here in the corner of this bed, I have this dwarf Wygela. It's called My Monet Purple Effect, and it stays really small and compact, so really good for a garden when you have limited space. So it gets to be only one and a half to two and a half tall and wide, and it is sun or part shade. In late spring, it blooms these really pretty purple pink flowers. And what's really nice about this shrub is that it has this beautiful variegated foliage. It starts out darker in the spring when it first emerges. And then as the season progresses, it kind of lightens up to this really pretty creamy white and green with a little bit of pink. It's actually a really beautiful shrub. This red Japanese maple is a lace leaf. It's called garnet. It's been planted here for about eight years and every spring I give it a good prune to keep it at a good size for this bed and I love the way that it arches over the other plants. Here in the front I have a grouping of three Millennium Allium and they're just about getting ready to bloom and I have a um, jade sedum, lemon jade sedum, rockin' jade sedum. It's a proven winter sedum. And it's in a little bit of shade with the Japanese maple, so it hasn't put on its bloom heads yet, but I even just love the texture of the foliage. I still have some of my allium blooms standing, and the purple flowers have long gone, but I still love the shape of the globes, and they add a pretty structure in the garden. Here in the front of the bed, I have a drift of five white, wee white hydrangeas. So these hydrangeas here are the proven winners, wee white. They are a dwarf hydrangea. They only get to be one and a half to two feet tall and wide. I initially really liked these hydrangeas, but I don't like them as much now. This is their third season planted here. And while they've grown really well, they do not tolerate the sun as well as I had hoped. The tag did say that they were rated for sun. However, they start getting burnt fairly quickly. Here's a clip I took about a week ago, the last week of June, where these uh, wee white hydrangeas had just started to bloom and they were a beautiful shade of creamy white with a hint of blush pink and they were looking gorgeous. And then within a week we got some really hot weather, no rain, and then they quickly started to look like roasted cauliflower. I'm going to cut back all of these blooms and deadhead these shrubs and they'll get a new flush in a few weeks. I noticed that I still have one carding mill bloom here in my patio bed. This rose is a David Austin rose and it had its first flush here back in towards the middle of June and it's pretty much done for now and something's eating the foliage but this beauty was a nice surprise. It's a apricot rose that then fades to this really pretty shade of pink and it looks so nice with that sprig of nepeta growing beside it. These beautiful lilac pom-pom poppies were sown back when there was snow on the ground. I scattered the seeds on top of some snow and they are absolutely beautiful and fluffy. I love them. Once they're done blooming, I'm gonna let the seed heads dry out 
and I'm going to collect the seeds so that hopefully I can grow them again next year. These tall Asiatic lilies are called Easy Whisper and they're a beautiful shade of coral and light pink and apricot. Really pretty and they're just starting to open up. The first of my day lilies in this patio bed have opened up. I'm not sure of the variety, but it's a beautiful double in this apricot pink color. These Easy Whisper Asiatic lilies look so beautiful tonight. They opened up so much since yesterday. Here I have two big clumps of Tutti Fruity Apricot Delight Yarrow, some Raspberry Double Scoop Coneflower, and a drift of Munstead English Lavender that I actually started from seed a few years ago now. This might be its fourth year. Lavender tends to be short-lived, so I don't know how long I'll have it but it is really beautiful. I enjoy it in this grouping. I'm really loving the way that this blue spruce lollipop or standard tree is looking in this corner adds some needed evergreen interest to this bed. Now I have two evergreen components in here. I have this blue conifer and I also have a lemon thread cypress down further. I planted a couple of zinnia here. I have a um, zinnia lime red and a zinnia lime blotch and a gardening friend of mine, Catherine, had given me a delphinium, so I have that there. And I have a bunch of beautiful coneflowers that are just coming into bloom. And coneflowers are certainly my top three garden perennials. They last for a really long time in the garden. And the pollinators love them. This one here is called Double Scoop Bubblegum. It's a Monrovia plant. And it's a really pretty, you know, double coneflower with this really pretty bubblegum pink color. This here is the traditional coneflower, the Echinacea purpurea. And here to the side, I have some Supreme Cantaloupe, which is another coneflower by Monrovia. This one's absolutely beautiful. It starts off this really like a creamsicle color orange, and then it ages to a really pretty apricot. There's some older ones down lower. And it's interesting how these double scoop coneflowers start because they kind of start like that where you think it's going to be a singular bloom. 
and then they send out all these additional petals. This is what they age to. This is a green twister echinacea that I grew from seed last year and this is the first time that I'm seeing it bloom. My geum, this was my Mai Tai geum that was absolutely stunning this spring. I've cut back all of the aged or spent bloom stalks and now it's just a really pretty foliage. And I love the way that it kind of just tufts here in the front. So even without blooms, it's really pretty. My Puckster Blue Budlia is just now starting to put on its blooms. These are a summer through fall plant and they are rated to a zone six and I love this butterfly bush for the compact size and for its prolific blooming. But in terms of hardiness, I think that at my zone six, I'm right at the cusp because I've had some significant dieback this year. There is a Pugster Amethyst. I had to cut it down, way down, and I'm glad to see that it's recovering, but I'm gonna have to heavily mulch it before the end of the season uh, this year to tuck it for the winter because um, I was worried for a little bit that it was just gonna be gone. Um, but I'm glad to see they're rebounding. Here I have some Nephophia, and this one is called Lucky and it is a limey green with a little bit of yellow to it. And another grassy texture in the garden, which I really like. Here's that lemon thread cypress. I do have to size control this one a little bit, so every other year or so I just go in and I give it a really hard prune and I start from underneath and I cut branches. You know, I go slowly and I cut branches from the inside, from underneath, from the top, and it's looking really, really pretty. This coneflower is called Pow Wow Berry. And this is a prolific coneflower for me. It's actually self-seeded in a bunch of places and I don't mind it one bit. In the front of this border, I have about three clumps of this uh, butterfly blue scabiosa, and it is just about ready to be cut back. It puts out a huge flush and lasts from early spring through right about summer and now once you cut this all back it will push out its second flush and go right through your frost in the fall this is a really long blooming perennial it just takes a little break towards the middle of summer the scabiosa will slow down but then this aster that i have here it's called um, peachy keen stokes aster will be absolutely gorgeous in just a couple more days here it's just starting to put on its buds. And it's a really, really pretty aster. And it'll look gorgeous backed by these pink coneflowers. My azalea here is now done blooming. It had a beautiful fuchsia pink bloom this spring but it also is showing signs of having azalea lace bug again. And you know that your azalea has lace bug. There they are. When your foliage starts looking like this. So I have to treat it with BT shortly. But it's growing really nicely and I really love this azalea. It has sentimental meaning to me. Now we'll move on here to the back of the garden in the shed bed and Japanese maple garden area.
Here I have a drift of a stilby looking really beautiful. And I don't know the variety of most of these because they were bought bare root in some bags from Walmart and Longfield Gardens. And I don't have the bags any longer. Last year they never bloomed, but it was year one. But this year they definitely showed up. Here have a quick fire hydrangea. And this hydrangea is absolutely beautiful. It is the first paniculata hydrangea to bloom in my garden. And it has such gorgeous bloom heads. It'll start off this creamy white and then it ages to a pink and like a rosy color. Very similar to the tips of this astilbe. My Zephyrine Druin Climbing Rose that I just planted this spring is growing so well here. And this is a part shade corner because this um, hydrangea is now going to start shading it. And look at all this new growth that's shooting up. I'm hoping that at some point it gets to the top of this trellis. And I think that would be really pretty. That's a clematis that I also have growing up there. It's um, Duchess of Edinburgh. It, this is only the second year. It also came in a bare root bag from Longfield Gardens. And it came with a mix of like a double purple. So I have that one in here too. But that clematis is kind of small and not doing as well. Clematis and I... We don't do so well together, neither do roses. Clematis always get wilted in my garden. If you have any hints for planting clematis to prevent the clematis wilt, I would love to know them if you can comment below. I placed some stones to kind of um, shade the roots and hopefully keep them cooler. I have three clumps of Carl Forrester reed grass here, ornamental grasses and I love them. They stay nice and columnar and compact for me. This is their third year and they are about two feet wide and at this point they're probably four feet tall. But they are getting a little bit of shade from this magnolia. So if they were getting more sun they would probably be even a little bit taller. Here in the corner, I have a hardy hibiscus. This is a summerific hibiscus by Proven Winners, and this variety is called Perfect Storm. And it is not yet blooming, but the foliage, absolutely gorgeous. The bloom is like a dinner plate size, large flower, really, really pretty. And it is um, a lighter pink with a darker pink center with a little tiny bit of like red veining. I'll be sure to um, do a tour once those are in bloom because they're really spectacular. The window boxes and these two containers that I planted with mostly things that I started from seed are starting to fill out. Here are the beautiful Princess Cosmos. They're a more uh, compact variety of white Cosmo. They only get to be about two feet tall. And it's funny because I have buds only on one corner or maybe on one of the plants. So I've been rotating it. Here I have my verbena that's starting to bloom. The uh, cosmos are filling out lovely. I did have an issue with aphids, so I've had to, I had to blast them with the hose a couple of times to kind of get that under control, but they are doing well now. Every once in a while, you do have to go in and clean up these um, 
yellowing leaves towards the bottom to keep them kind of fresh. But look at this ferny texture, really pretty. The alyssum in the front of my window box is doing really well as well. In fact, after this tour, I'm gonna shear it back and let it flush back out. Because after a while, it starts to get kind of spindly and leggy. And so if you wanna keep it nice and bushy, that's what you have to do. This is my Atomic Purple Gomfrina. I got these seeds from Baker Creek this year and they're looking really pretty. They're really dainty small bloom. And my Mandevilla just had a big flush and I've had to clean out a lot of the um, leaves, but there are a bunch more blooms getting ready to open up. I really love the white Mandevilla. This is my first year with the white. I usually get the pink. This Hamlin grass that I uh, transplanted, well, I cleaned it up. It had a dead spot in it. It's doing really well. I um, showed that in my part sun, part shade garden video. I have a Peruvian daffodil. I bought a bag of two bulbs at the Home Depot this spring, and it is full of foliage, and hopefully any day now it'll send out those beautiful white airy blooms. These are my little lime hydrangeas and they are doing absolutely beautiful. They look really full this year and are putting on all their bloom heads now. I love every stage of this hydrangea. I love the foliage. I love the uh, bloom heads when they first come out and they're like that limey green color and then they turn a creamy white and then they age to an antique pink. Absolutely stunning. The lamb's ear, the Helen Von Steen lamb's ear that I transplanted to this area is doing exactly what I hoped it would, offer this beautiful fuzzy texture and light blue color against this green foliage. And they're doing, they're, they're rebounding pretty good from the transplant. If you remember, I divided one into two and this is a new plant I just got at Home Depot this year. So don't be afraid to divide things. If you baby them a little with some water and some shade for a few days, they usually do pretty well. These iris I planted from some bulbs that I got in a Longfield Gardens bag. They are a later blooming type of iris and the variety is called Tiramisu. And they have these absolutely beautiful and humongous, very large blooms. Here I have a grouping of these concrete pots and I have my two topiaried um, boxwood. I've been shaping them and they're looking really nice. These are the green mountain or green velvet, one of those. And in the center I have a David Austin rose that I received as a replacement for another rose that passed away. <laughs> Rest in peace. Um, it was the uh, a David Austin Bosco Bell. And so I asked them to send me a climber. This one is Bathsheba and it's a climber. And I have to find a home for it in the garden. So in this area, I recently did a video planting it up and I named the plants there. So I'm just gonna kind of do a quick pass. Um, if you notice, I have those little tables there because my hookaro was getting too much sun. So I had to shade them. And we are going to start setting these stones likely this fall once the weather cools off. I have two more chairs there shading some hosta. 
So I have to try to refrain from buying any more shade plants until these trees fill out a little bit more in maybe a season or two. So let these things acclimate and then we can have some fun. And you see that lush green drift right there? Bunch of weeds that need some attention. Of sunflowers that I planted with my son a few, um, you know, maybe about four to six weeks ago now, are starting to bloom. This is a strawberry blonde sunflower. I started these from seed. And I love how they are different. So this one, um, it starts off more yellow and then it kind of ages with this pretty pinky red. And I started a succession. So there I have another set of the uh, strawberry blonde sunflowers. So once these are all done, I have another grouping here that should come up right behind it. I'm even considering starting a third succession this weekend. But, um, you know, I thought that these strawberry blonde were a single stem variety, but look, this particular one has one, two, three, four more blooms coming onto it and that one also so I think that these are multi um, multi bloom which is awesome because I thought I would get a one flower and done here on my right side front bed I have lots and lots of daylilies some of them are already blooming and then the others are just starting to bud up I have some Asian lilies in the back that haven't bloomed yet, but will in the next couple of weeks probably. I have some really tall Echinacea purpurea that I grew from seed. This is its third year and it looks really tall and beautiful. The bees love it. This is some snowy Spires verbascum that I started from seed a couple of years ago. And it's just at the end of its bloom now. But it is this really beautiful creamy white bloom with a purple and orange center. This daylily here is called Addie Branch Smith. Here's some more of that prairie blue eyes. And here I have a really beautiful orange one that's called South Seas. This day lily is called Bejeweled. And I just love the way that all of these colors work so nicely together. Day lilies are one of those plants that you either love or you hate. I love the blooms. I don't like that they only last a day and that the foliage gets really yellow and unsightly after a little while. Down here I have some daylilies called Persian Market. The Semfalse Spirea now has its summer color, which is this green fern-like foliage. And it's put on these beautiful spikes of white blooms that are fuzzy and they start 
by looking like these little white pearls. Here I have a hardy hibiscus that's getting ready to bloom. This is a beautiful white hibiscus with a dark fuchsia center. And I just planted a Carl Forrester grass right here. And all along the edge I have a border of cat's pajamas nepeta that's actually ready to be um, pruned back so that it can give me a second flush. If you watched my video about the lawn care company um, damaging some of my shrubs, the candy corn spirea that I had planted here was completely dead and burnt to a crisp. But luckily I was able to find a replacement at Lowe's recently. And so now I just have to submit my receipt for repayment, which is still a hassle, but I'm just glad I was able to find a replacement. These cone flowers are looking a little bit worse for the wear. I started these from seed also, but I transplanted them twice just this season. <laughs> so they're looking a little tattered, but they'll be fine. As long as they survive, they'll look prettier next year. That happens sometimes. There are banna years for some plants and not for others. This main walkway bed now is in a state of rest. All of my knockout roses had their first flush and I pruned them all back and cleaned them up. These foxgloves that were absolutely gorgeous this year have now started to dry up and I'm letting the seed pods go to seed so that I can collect them and hopefully have um, foxgloves again next year. So I'm, I plan on growing some more from seed. Foxgloves are biennial so you start the plant one year and then they bloom for you the following year. I also have some seedling gomfrina that I have um, dotted along the walkway. They're a little behind, but they have certainly doubled in size in the last week that they've been planted. So they um, should still give us blooms in the next month or so. Here's some more of that white swan echinacea that I started from seed. Now this one I did not move a bunch of times, so it's looking beautiful. Some snapdragons that I started from seed finally bloomed. These are orange wonder snapdragons. And other than the coneflower and the couple of snapdragons, there's not a whole lot going on in this bed at the moment. We're just waiting for the roses to reload. I have another um, clump of coneflower down this end, and these blooms are huge. They're the same variety, white swan. Look at that. Really large blooms. I love coneflower. This is a really great perennial, and this will now take us into fall with regular deadheading and deadheading just means that once your bloom is done you uh, you know blooming or flowering you would just trim it off and then it'll create new buds for you this driveway bed is looking really lovely as well and this is starting to come into prime time for this bed I have a drift of about five bobo hydrangeas going all the way down here and this is another paniculita type hydrangea and it puts on the most beautiful blooms. This might be my favorite hydrangea of them all, the Bobo. Here I have some Allium. Um, in my patio bed, I have Millennium, and over here I have Amethyst Bubbles. I have a grouping of three in this corner and a grouping of three down in that corner. My Liatris, or also known as Gay Feather, is starting to bloom. 
and my Olivia Rose Austin still has some blooms on it. Some more fluffy pom pom lilac poppies and my red Japanese maple cascading over the plants, which I love. I also have another red foliage plant right in the back there. That is a tiny wine nine bark. And it is a dwarf nine bark. Gets about three to five tall and wide. The Shasta daisies are in full bloom. And gee, th these are just such a simple beauty in the garden. I think every garden should have Shasta daisies. These are up there with my top favorite perennials as well. These are some Asiatic lilies called Tiny Diamond that I had gotten in clearance at Lowe's about three years ago. Last year I didn't get any blooms before a bunny or a deer came by and bit off all of the buds. But this year they've more than doubled in size and look beautiful. Some agitarum that my friend Catherine had grown from seed and given to me. Well, that's the end of my early July garden tour. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you in the next one.